Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. We are happy to be back together in worship here at Bell Buckley United Methodist Church. Uh, we met uh, virtually last week because the heat was out. And uh, I learned this morning that the back unit's not working quite right. So everybody, if you want to stay warm, you can move a little closer up front here. Or, or the window on this side is very sunny, so some folks made a good decision over there. Well, we're happy to be together this morning, and I want to invite you this morning as we turn our hearts and minds to God, will we stand and worship together? His amazing love.
again. Good morning and bienvenidos. We are glad to be worshiping together. And it is so good to hear everybody's voices this morning. I want to give you a few things uh, from our bulletin about what's going on in the life of our church and, and community. Uh, if you open up your bulletin, you'll see that there's a Connect card in there. Uh, you can let us know on that card that you're worshiping with us today, and uh, there are spaces on there to let us know uh, if there's a need that you have, uh, especially prayer requests or, or anything that you want the, the church to know. So I invite you to fill that Connect card out today, and you can either uh, turn that into the offering plate or bring it by the Welcome Center on your way out. We are going to be continuing this week with our uh, Bible study on Genesis. That will be happening Wednesday night. You can come uh, any age uh, to come take part in our fellowship meal at 6 o'clock, and then we'll have activities for, uh, and studies for all ages. So there will be children's and youth studies and activities, um, as well as that Genesis study is our adult study right now. So I invite you to come on to that. Um, we have just started to talk about Abraham, so we're not too far. Just, just jump in. We'll see here next that our administrative council meeting is going to meet after the worship service in the fellowship hall next Sunday. So uh, if you are on one of our um, committees, uh, your, your chairperson especially, we expect you to be there. Uh, or if you just want to come and see uh, you know, the business of the church and, and uh, take part in that meeting and hear kind of what's going on at a deeper level within our congregation, you're welcome to come sit in on that meeting. Um, we have in our, or our, our welcome center, I got a little churchy there on you using a word like narthex, our, our welcome center. We have some baby bottles that are setting out uh, on a table and also on the, the welcome center desk there. And those are for First Choice Pregnancy Center. You'll see that uh, there's some info in the bulletin here about uh, how to take one of those home, uh, make some donations through that by bringing it back to the church. And so we'll have those in the welcome center for couple more weeks, and so invite you to stop by and grab one of those today. Uh, not mentioned in the bulletin, but definitely important, we have, uh, this is the first Sunday of uh, Black History Month in February, and so uh, there's a lot of great history to that through our Wesleyan tradition, and want to invite you, if you say, huh, I want to celebrate Black History Month in some way and don't know what to do. I'll point you to a couple folks that you can go read something from. Uh, Richard Allen, uh, you can go read one of his sermons and uh, just enjoy that. He's actually the founder of the AME Church. And then uh, a good Methodist, Sojourner Truth, you can go read Ain't I a Woman. So if you're looking for something to read for this February, those are some good places to start. Uh, then if you'll flip your page, uh, this is just brought to my attention. And so I wanted to make sure to get this in the bulletin. Uh, is that, uh, I'll blame this, John Weaver sent me an email to my old email. And I said, John, I don't work where I was before. I'm down here in Bell Buckle, Tennessee at a great congregation. Just send it to my new uh, emails, Pastor Zach at bellbuckleumc.org. And so he said, oh, I'm sorry, he sent this over to me. And they're going to have at the Wesley Foundation at MTSU uh, the annual pancake fundraiser, and that's going to be this coming Saturday, February 12th, uh, 7 to 10 a.m. If you want to come and just jump right into eating food, uh, that part of the, the day is going to be, I believe, uh, 8 to 9.30 is what I was told, or that's when they're doing the, uh, uh, the events. So, yeah, which I'm going to get to that in a second. One, one of the, the main events is a clergy breakfast battle, is what they call it. They, they've had this at other points in the past, and just, I, I think last year they didn't do it due to COVID, but it's back. And uh, what it is, is they ask pastors from all uh, over the local area to come and make a, a breakfast item 
to be judged by the people in attendance. And so this is all to raise money for the Wesley Foundation of Middle Tennessee, help our college ministry. Uh, it's one of the best things that the Methodist Church does to reach college-age students in this area. And so uh, it's $10 to get in and, and eat, but once you're there, you're not only going to have what the, the Wesley Foundation makes of pancakes and, and breakfast items, uh, but you can go to each of the tables that the local churches have set up, and I'll be there representing Bell Buckley United Methodist Church uh, and doing my best to bring home so, some sort of prize and glory for, for God, but also for Bell Buckle. Uh, and so uh, I'll be there with my little table. You can stop on by and see me. Uh, you can bring, in addition to your $10, uh, a little extra uh, to throw into a basket that'll be on each table, and that'll vote for the best. But there are some non-money ways to vote as well uh, on best table decorations, most creative, and best hospitality, I think. So I'll be very hospitable on Saturday. Hope you come on by and, and eat what I have prepared. I have one most creative dish twice in a row. I'm, I'm looking for year three. I want the hat trick, so... Come, come on and vote. I, I need your votes there. Okay, <laughs> that is it for announcements today. Uh, as you can tell, we, there's a lot of fun stuff going on through our congregation. I want to invite you to come and participate as much as possible in the life of the church. Uh, and, and now let's go into a time of prayer this morning. Uh, in our bulletin also, there's a prayer list. This is very important to take home and have these names in front of you to know who to be in prayer for this week, and I uh, hope you'll take this from your bulletin. If you, if you recycle or throw the rest away, take this home so you can know these are the names that we need to pray over this week. New to this list are John and Tanya Farley. Uh, they have gotten COVID, and so we are praying for them to just join the, the rest of the, the group that we've had at this church that has recovered well from COVID and is back with us in worship. Uh, and then also on the list is Everett Cotton as well as Gail Cotton. Uh, Everett, um, to the best of my knowledge, he, when he went to the hospital, he had low oxygen. And what they told him when he was there uh, was that he had had a heart attack or has had a heart attack since he first went in. And so he's got some different health stuff going on. Uh, that we just need to be in prayer about. A and I know he is a dear friend to many here. Uh, and uh, I, I include Gail as well, not only f just for her uh, spiritual well-being, but she's also recovering from COVID. So um, just pray for their health. Let's go to God together in prayer this morning. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and be together in fellowship and worship and celebration with the body of Christ. God, it's good to be together today to sing your praises and to thank you deeply out of the blessings that have happened in our lives. God, we've seen you at work all around us and and God, we're, we're constantly amazed by what you do through the movement of your Holy Spirit and through the continued action and inspiration of your Son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that, that Christ is risen and, and alive and well in our lives, that we get a chance to be a, a hand or a foot or an eye or an ear of the body of Christ at work in the world today. God, as we listen with expectation and, God, we, we hear what you say to us and discern a, a call to ministry, God, we ask that you might inspire us, open up our hearts and minds that we might truly hear that call. And, God, give us your Holy Spirit so that we might have a holy boldness about us to, to answer that call without reservation or, or fear. 
God, speak to us and let us know where it is that you would send us to do your work. God, let us listen and hear and see where those in our community, in our family of faith are that that need help, that need a hand or a, a shoulder or an ear at this time, God. God, let us be on the lookout for those that are hungry, both physically and spiritually, and, and God, especially let us minister to the sick. God, let us realize that all we have it comes from you and that you have blessed us that we might live life in your Son Christ abundantly and share it with all that we meet. God, we thank you for this gift. We pray for those that are not here with us today. And we pray for our community and our world that they may come to know the abundant love and grace of Christ that calls out to each and every one of us in the midst of a broken and chaotic world. God, we pray this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, today. Amen. As we prepare for our offering, I want to invite those that are helping with the offering to come forward. We will have a time of worship and reflection as we give this offering, and as we take it, we want to be mindful of all of those blessings, like I talked about, that, that God has sown into our lives. Let us pray. God, as we give back to you, out of your great abundance, God, we, we thank you for the gift of your church and the ministry of the faithful. God, as we offer these gifts and lift them up to you, God, take those gifts and, and, and see the potential that they truly have. God, see the places where they need to go, and God, we pray that you send out all these blessings tenfold onto the world to build your kingdom here among us in a way that we might not even imagine. But God, let us witness what you will do and what you will work for good among us. God, we pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is going to come from the Gospel of Luke. We are back in Luke here today, and we're going to be reading from chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Let's hear these words this morning. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, and the one one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little way from the shore. He sat down from there, and he taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long, but we haven't caught anything. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down to Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. 
And, and so also James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for n- from now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and they followed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you can remember back to uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we find Jesus here after he has left his hometown and and just preached a a sermon, which didn't get too good of a reaction. Well, the sermon got a good reaction, but if you remember, he he did some things afterwards uh, that made people kind of question what they had heard, and they got upset with him, and they wanted to throw Jesus off a cliff. And so here we have Jesus again walking and getting ready for a sermon, and he, he's got this big crowd around him. Uh, and maybe he learned from his uh, lessons last time, and he said, I'm going to take a boat out and preach from out there today. So he gets on out there away from the crowd, and he's on the boat sitting down for a sermon. And he, uh, he asks the fishermen to, to take him out, and then we, we see that some amazing things happen. We had to know that some, some interesting things were going to happen as soon as it said, Jesus is out by the lake. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to go out and be at a lake, but some great things often happen there. It's an interesting place. It's uh, a lake. It, it's you know, it's like a pool that's just out there in the middle of a field somewhere. And isn't, isn't that a weird way? A lot of people have gone, maybe they haven't gone to a lake, but they've gone to a pool. I've got to tell you, lakes way better than pools. Don't mess around with pools. Now, uh, if you've been to a pool, you know that there's a, the shallow end and the deep end. And Jesus gets into that a little bit. He tells them, go out into the deep water. Uh, and when we first learn to swim, maybe we start in a pool. We have our, our floaties on. Uh, I, I know our, our little niece, she, she has to wear her uh, protective gear when she goes into the pool. She doesn't want to be too risky. Uh, you start out in the shallow end, and then you move on out to the deep end when you've got your, your you know, sea legs about you. Now, pools are nice and clean. They are. Uh, they, they got that nice chlorine going on. This it, it, pools are nice, but there's something about a lake in there. It's it's kind of gross in a way when you start to think about everything that's in there. But there's something just mysterious and awesome about a natural body of water. People go out and they'll drive and look out at an ocean. I've never driven and just gone and, and looked at somebody else's pool. I've never done it. I've, I've dr- driven and jumped into somebody's pool, but that's not for the sermon today. Um, lakes, uh, I remember one of the first lakes I saw was as a little kid. Uh, my grandfather had this farm, and I would I'd give the caveat of, he didn't have a farm. He had animals that were on somebody else's farm. We didn't have farm money. So he, he kept his cows there for a little fee. And there was a little lake there on that, that farm. And when I looked at it, I said, what is that? Because I said, it's not grass. That lake was as green as, oh, Joy was wearing a coat last night. It was as green as that. And if, if you were here for the Emmaus meeting last night, you know what I'm talking about. It, it was green, green. And I, I said, why does that look like that? And they said, that's, that's water. That's a lake. And I said, no, that's not water. <laughs> there was just algae and all sorts of stuff on top of that lake. I've never been to this lake that it's talking about here uh, in the Scripture. Uh, but I, I bet it has its own quirks. Lakes are fun. I, when I was a little bit older, still a kid, my, my parents took me out fishing. Uh, there was a competition on base where we were living, and uh, 
they, they took us all out. We had our, our lines and rods out, and they were seeing who could catch the most fish. There's going to be an uh, all-day competition, and bring your haul in and, and get it judged. Uh, it was for the most fish, I think, and the biggest fish. I wish it would have just been by weight, because my brother Alex would have won the whole thing. Uh, not because he caught fish, but what he had on his line. Everybody had just nice little rows of fish uh, on their line hanging out on the shore there. But what Alex had was three fully grown snapping turtles on his line. And I don't want to give anybody a phobia about going into lakes, but there's, there's stuff in there. <laughs> Lakes are kind of gross. They're, they're filled with interesting things like snapping turtles. And uh, so you just knew when Jesus was by a lake, something interesting was about to happen. And what he does, he, he finds these fishermen, and they're not fishing with lines. They're, they're fishing with nets, and they're packing up for the day. They're washing the nets. He goes out and finds these guys and says, hey, I had a little thing happen last week with these crowds. I'm going to go out on a boat, if that's fine with you. He's already in the boat, and he's saying, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's put out. And so Simon cr crawls into the boat and says, okay. <laughs> Takes him out, and, and he's sitting there, and he's listening to Jesus' sermon from the boat. He's got a, a front row seat. After he finishes all that up and gets done with his sermon, which I'm, I'm sure was a, a fantastic sermon about the kingdom of God, knowing Jesus, he, he finishes all that up. Probably said something very similar to like he just preached about back in his hometown. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The year of the Lord's favor is here. After preaching that, he, he says, hey, I know you already have been washing your nets and you're packing in. Why don't we put out into the deep water? Why don't we go out into the deep water and cast your nets out again? You're thinking, Jesus, listen, we've, we've been out here all night. He might have been doing a little fishing off the side of the boat while he was waiting for Jesus to finish up his sermon. He said, we've been here all night. We haven't caught anything. But if you say so, I'll, I'll do it. And they throw the nets over, and they, they feel the boat lurch. Uh, and he said, what is that? And he starts to pull up the net. He said, maybe we're caught on something. I never felt anything like that before in my life. He, and he said, he might have been thinking like me, oh, that's just a bunch of snapping turtles in there or something. They pull the net up, and they're amazed. There's so many fish in the net. They have to call over to their buddies on the shore, and they say, get the other boat over here. There's so many fish. We're going to need a bigger boat. We're going to need both boats. Go, come and get over here. And they're pulling fish on. They've loaded up both boats. They're, they're so full. They're beginning to sink, and they're, they, they're amazed. Simon falls down to his knees right there. He's probably just listened to this sermon about the year of the Lord's favor and, and, and all of these things that Jesus is expecting to happen and promising to happen. And he looks at all the fish, more fish than he's caught in a week, a month, who knows. And he just falls to his knees and, and says, get away from me, Lord. I wonder if Simon knew just how much he was getting himself into in that moment. He was a little afraid of it, enough to be <laughs> saying, I don't want to associate with this guy. I need, to, I need to tell him to get away from me. I'm a sinful man, and, and this is a holy person that I'm dealing with here. Jesus calls us out of the shallow end of life. Jesus calls us out of the nice, pristine pools and, and calls us into the deep waters. It's got to be said that when Jesus is talking about the deep water, he's not j just talking about the actual depth of the water. This is a, a man who uh, is a teacher of Scripture and 
when he references the deep water, he's referencing uh, an image from Scripture of the deep, chaotic water that was there at the very beginning of time. Jesus is referencing this this scene from Genesis, and, and there's this sense of chaotic, wild, and dangerous elements that he's calling the disciples into, even though they're not going by that yet, but soon. Jesus is calling them to something that is not comfortable or clean or nice, but something that has a sense of danger and and chaos to it, something that is uncontrollable and and wild. I I see some posts sometimes when I'm scrolling through Facebook about uh, uh, folks that say, you know, you can't be too safe. You can never be too safe out there. Uh, And I apologize if you've shared or posted something like this. I'm not calling you out. I'm just noticing things when I'm on there. Uh, It'll be things like, listen, if you're walking through a parking lot and there's a $5 bill on the ground, don't pick that up. A van is going to come get you right then. Can't be too safe out there. Uh, it'll be things like, listen, if you ever walk past an old man whistling uh, a Yankee Doodle and he's got a red handkerchief sticking out of his back pocket, I know exactly what that means because it's happened to 10 other people. And, and the, the, like I said, the van's right around the corner. It's, you can't be too safe out there. That, that, that's how some of those posts are, to be frank. <laughs> Now, the world is a dangerous place. It's like, a, it's like that lake, right? It's got things in it that are, are, are a little frightening. It's, it's messy. It's chaotic. It's wild. There's, there is a sense of danger out there. But for Christians, I, I, I think there is a response to the, the sentiment of you can't be too careful. I think you can be too careful. I think you can live your whole life in the shallow end of life and never get out into the deep water where Jesus is calling us. We can play it too safe. We, we can say to Jesus when Jesus asks us to put out into the deep water, we can say, no, thank you, Jesus. I'd rather not. But that's not what Simon said. When Simon is asked to put out into the deep water and, and put his net in there, he, he thinks about it and says, well, I haven't caught anything all day. But, but this is the key. This is the attitude that we need to have about the call of Christ in our lives, even though it may seem frivolous or trivial or, or, or even if it seems unsafe or, or uncomfortable to go out into those deep waters. We have to say, like Simon did to Christ, you have to say, if you say so. If you say so, Lord. Look what happens when he does. The, the catch is huge. There's all kinds of fish that are caught up into the net. And, and we all know that sometimes we say yes and we don't have this net's bursting kind of story. Maybe what happens is a little harder to understand. Maybe we're met with a crowd that wants to throw us off a cliff. But we must say, if, if you say so, Lord. After hearing Jesus preach, they, they pull in this miraculous catch. And I wonder, as they were sitting there, Did they see something in that moment that changed their heart, that that made them think, maybe I ought to follow this guy that's too holy for me, that's calling me to do things that that I don't understand, that, that preaches a message that I haven't heard in a long time. 
didn't believe could be possible. I wonder as if they're sitting there staring at everything caught up in those nets, just fish, uh, fish that are good to eat, fish that are from the bottom of the lake there. I wonder if they were wondering if there was something there happening before their eyes that they wanted to see themselves caught up in. They get back to shore and it says they left everything and just followed Jesus. We say that a lot in church, but, but I, I, we just have to let that sink in. They got back to shore. These three guys, they're out on the family boats. They, they've just got the, the nets. It, it says they left everything, and, and they just went and followed Jesus. It, it doesn't give any explanation the way that, that Luke tells it. It doesn't say they went and told their families that they're heading out of town it doesn't say that they got their affairs in order first. It doesn't even say that they took the fish to the market to sell them. Uh, for all we know, they left the fish sitting there on the boat, uh, a boat load of money basically in that day, just sitting there. More fish in, in prospects than they've ever had in their life for a comfortable life. And they said, let's leave that all behind and follow this guy to wherever he goes next. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to listen to a call that calls us out uh, of stability and into uncertainty? Out of our, our shallow end, into the deep waters, into uh, a life that is anything but, uh, but comfortable or, or certain? Are we ready to leave everything behind and follow Jesus? We might feel like Simon in that moment of thinking, I, I am not worthy to follow this guy. I, I'm afraid of what following him is going to mean for my life. Are we ready to say, Lord, if you say so? I pray for that spirit and for that sense of call to, to grab hold of us, that we might see something in the call of Christ that we can't wait to be caught up in ourselves. Amen. As we come and, and take part in a time of communion together, we remember... Uh, a time when Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room. They had been on a lot of journeys and, and time, been through a lot of times together. But Jesus was asking them once again to be prepared to put out into deep water, to uncertainty, into a world where I'm no longer with you. But the Spirit will be there to guide you as He prepared them for this new adventure. He just shared a meal with them. And as they gathered in that upper room, Christ took bread. He broke it and He offered it to God, giving thanks. And He gave it to His disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Christ took a cup and he gave thanks to God again. And then he turned to his disciples and said to them, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. God, this morning I pray, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of, of bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. May we be the body of Christ 
redeemed by His blood, offered to the world. God, make us one with each other, one with you, O Lord, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather today, uh, I want to say we are going to come and, and take this meal by intention. We will uh, come forward and have a chunk of the bread ripped off of the loaf and, and placed in your hand. As you receive that, you'll be invited to dip it into the cup and, and take communion. After that, you are welcome to go and pray at these altar rails. Uh, and I also want you to know that if you are uh, a bit squeamish about any germs uh, from this. We do have individually packaged elements that are in here, uh, the body and blood of Christ that have been blessed as well. And you are welcome to grab one of those if you did not get one on your way in. Uh, I want to invite Carolina up to help me serve. And uh, as we do that, um, we want to uh, make sure that we serve our praise team first and invite you to come and join.
Let's stand as we sing. Let's go forth with this benediction today. Would you reach out your hands and receive this benediction? God, as you speak to us, may we have ears and eyes to to know that call. God, as we go out into the deep water, and get out of the shallow end of life, God, may you send your Holy Spirit to be with us. God, not to keep us from the uncertainty or the, the dirt or the, the chaos of that deep water, but God, to just keep us afloat. God, send us out into your world to preach grace and truth and love 
to preach your glory and your kingdom to all that we meet, telling them of the good news and celebrating it alongside them. God, send us out into the deep water to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Go in peace.